today we're speaking about photographers, you guys, getting better at talking to camera and why you need to. Later, we're going to go over some notes from the desk of a marketing pro and get into this week's mini challenge. Today, I'm also going to make some time for Q&A. And later on, we're going to get into plans for the year. And I'm going to ask you during this Q&A, if you have challenges that you'd like to see this year that you, I mean, you guys don't know what my challenges are. I got to kind of keep that under wraps. But if you have a challenge that you'd like to see this year, let me know what it is. And I'll make sure that I get it in there. It's so funny, like just being muted, just a little bit of a sidebar. It's part and parcel for what we're talking about today. Being a photographer, being somebody who's used to being off camera, used to being on set, behind the scenes, however you want to analyze it, that's what we're used to. We're not necessarily used to being on camera. And for me, all of my on-camera time has been learned. You have to understand, I've been... You guys have heard me say before, I've had a channel since uh, 2008, but I didn't really, YouTube was different back then. YouTube was um, cat videos and not really much about, <laughs> nothing much about anything really serious. There was no real podcast on there or anything like that. So back then I first started practicing talking to camera and I, I can look back at early footage of myself talking to camera and believe me, it's cringe. Like for me, it's cringe looking back and seeing myself speaking on camera. But the thing that I have to commend myself for is actually trying. And that's the whole thing about today. That's what today's episode is all about, is just I'm trying to help you guys shift your mindset. As soon as you shift your mindset, and we're going to get into that in a little bit, as soon as you shift your mindset, you're going to be able to be on camera so much easier. And being on camera is going to help you talk to clients. It's going to help you talk to strangers. It's going to help you approach people on the street and say, can I take your photograph? It's also going to be able to help you be in front of a boardroom presenting your portfolio. So we are going to get into a section that I like to call mastery. And today it's all about speaking to camera. Today we're talking about getting better at speaking to camera. It's beneficial for every photographer to speak to camera. Whether you think that you're trying to be a YouTuber or not, whether you're trying to be a YouTuber or not, it's important to get good at speaking to camera. I'm going to tell you why. And by the way, I know you're not thrilled about this. I know you're not thrilled about me talking to you about speaking to camera. You want me to be talking to you about making photographs, but I promise you there's a method to my madness. I'm trying to create the ultimate photographer, you, in through watching this. So you're going to see that this will help you. I promise this will help you. And watch how your energy, your vibe, your confidence changes once you start going through this exercise of speaking to camera. There are some barriers that you might be feeling when it comes to speaking to the camera, and I promise you all of those barriers are internal. All of them come from past trauma. All of them come from when we were kids and we were forced to do public speaking. We were forced to speak in front of our class and we had our classmates making fun of us, making fun of our voice. All of those things are triggering and they make it so as we become adults and we're already shy people, us creatives, so as we become adults, it becomes a barrier that we build up and we just actually end up not talking to camera, but we have to kind of undo that childhood drama. And how we do that is by talking to camera. It's not public speaking anymore. It's just you. 
we can get over that stuff that happened to us, people laughing at us when we were talking to the class. This is just you in your house talking to camera, so let's get into how it's gonna benefit you. First of all, when you speak to camera, it shows confidence, it shows authority. It makes the person who's listening to you trust you, especially if you're able to deliver your message with confidence, with authority, with eye contact. These are things that you can actually take from all the how to be a power player in a meeting books that you've read. We know that being in front of camera is very similar to being in front of a stranger. So getting better at being in front of camera helps you ask a stranger on the street to take their photo as much as it helps you showing your portfolio to a client that you've never met for the first time and asking them for the type of money that you deserve. We have to train ourselves to be with the same level of comfort on camera or in a meeting that we are with our family and friends. How that confidence comes from is preparation. We don't have to have that kind of preparation when we're hanging out with our family and friends. But when, when we're in a meeting or when we're talking to camera, you have to have a point. You have to have an overall perspective. You have to have a point of view. And when it comes to conveying your point of view, once you have a take, once you have something to say, that's the time to turn the camera on. That's the time to deliver your message. But if you still find it daunting to do, some people use a teleprompter and how you get that script in is by writing it down. Write down the things that you wanna say. For me, I use point form. In the past, I used to write novels for notes for my podcast, but I realized I found my eyes darting back and forth between my notes and I was losing focus. Therefore, my viewers are losing focus and losing confidence in me because I'm reaching for what I wanna say. What I realized, it was smarter to just make points that you want to make, be able to look down, see your next point, and then deliver that message because they're your words anyways. How I prepare to speak to camera is this. Number one, I know what to say or I know what I want to say. Second, I get my head in the game. I set up my equipment and the things that you need. You need a tripod. Having the camera handheld as you're trying, having the camera propped somewhere, like you're not able to really get that perfect shot and that's what you're looking for even if you're just doing a zoom call the position of your camera making sure that your camera is on eye line you're not looking up at the camera or the camera is not looking up at you all of these things are things that you know you're photographers you guys know how to set up a photograph think about that when you're setting up your shot i have light the position of the light i have some pretty things in the background that are catching your eye, create a good shot and then really know what you have to say, know what you want to say and use point form rather than full novels because without a prompter it becomes exactly impossible to hit all your points without flubbing. Then you're doing take after take after take after take. My suggestion, points and just glance at your next point and deliver it. On delivering your message, let's, let me just give you some things that you guys should be thinking about when it comes to talking to camera. The first big point is nonverbal communication. Now, what I'm doing right now is I'm holding my arms down as I'm communicating to you to show you the difference. I mean, it's actually really difficult for me to keep my hands down like this because over my two years of broadcasting live, I've realized how important nonverbal communication is. So, oh, that's so painful for me to do. Now I can use my hands. So you can see when I'm using my hands to convey my messages, when I'm using inflection, when I'm using pauses, these things hold people's attention. Nonverbal communication, use of pauses, really knowing the points that you're trying to make and not trying to rush through your dialogue. Sounding rushed also isn't how we talk. We want our points to be heard and we leave pauses in order for that information to absorb. The next big key point I would say that you really need to lock in on is eye contact. You notice I've been making eye contact with you, the viewer, the entire time. I'm looking at you, watch me. 
What that makes the video feel like is that we're having a conversation. Watch the difference now when I switch my eyes from looking at you to looking at my screen. Now I'm looking at the screen that's popped out and I'm watching myself as I'm being recorded. Work on your eye contact with camera, even if you hate the fact that you're on camera, even if you hate the fact that you're talking to it. Eye contact, inflection, nonverbal communication, and pauses are all super critical for you to learn how to deliver on camera and it makes it super great when you're delivering it in a meeting, presenting your portfolio, or for your own personal videos, which by the way, you should be making. If you don't have your bio on your website as a video, why write your bio out when you can say it? You can tell people what you love to shoot, what you're passionate about, what makes you wake up in the morning. Why not make a video and have a video on your about section rather than a picture of you and your bio, which rarely do people read. Editing your performance. After you've shot your video, you need to watch it back. You need to go through and get the best takes. I recently have discovered an app called Descript. And what Descript does is it allows you to, it basically takes your video content and it transcribes it into paragraphs of text and you can read back the paragraphs and if you copy paste and take out a paragraph it takes it out exactly from the timeline. I've been using Descript to do my first pass on my edit. I take out ums or I take out pauses or if I do a take and that take doesn't work I use Descript to take that take completely out and it also stops me from repeating myself. If I say the same thing a different way, but I'm basically saying the same thing twice, it allows me to go back, see them visually, read it as a sentence and say that one sounded better than this one. So then I can just beginning of the sentence, end of the sentence, select it and delete it and it comes off the timeline. So that's how I've been doing my dialogue editing lately and it's definitely shortened how long I spend in front of the camera and also how long I spend in front of the computer. I hope you found this helpful. A little bit of therapy, talking to camera, it's going to help you. I promise it's going to be difficult but if you keep trying, keep practicing and keep talking to camera, the next time you're gonna be passionately excited to show your portfolio because your verbal communication, your confidence, your authority, and the trust that's gonna come from you having some face time with people is gonna be apparent. So, hope that helped you. We'll see you guys on the next one. Oh, by the way, YouTube thinks that you should watch this video next. It would really help me. Give it a watch, I promise it'll be worth your time. See you on that one. So you got to understand our early experiences with speaking to camera are going to be cringe. They're going to be cringe for sure, but we have to keep practicing. Speaking to camera helps us. It, it, it's like almost therapy is a good way to describe it. You can use speaking to camera to journal. Like you can do it as a video blog or a vlog. The reason I say journal is just to get your thoughts down, just to get your ideas down. It's just good practice. There's lots of people who use voice memos in order to get their thoughts down, to get their ideas down. It would basically be that, except for you're talking to camera. So as our friend Ethan works on his setup, he's been sending me notes weekly from the desk of a marketing pro. We had an extensive conversation this week and we're going to be bringing you some pre-recorded content soon, as well as some other plans that I can't reveal quite yet. So before we get into this week's challenge, let's review some notes from a marketing pro. I love the fact that e Ethan is sending us this. Start building a strategy, a marketing strategy by answering these five questions. 
this is going to help you guys greatly, just like it's helped me. Like, I'm thrilled at the fact that he's put this together for us. So let's get into the goods. So when it comes to your marketing strategy, the first thing you have to ask yourself is what are, what are you selling? And what we're selling is photography and photography services. So knowing what it is that you want to offer is super key. Make sure that you get a notebook, make sure that you open a document and kind of map out all of these points because it's going to help you sell your business. How long have you been operating? How's your business structured? Who are your customers? What's working for you? What isn't working for you? These are all things that you have to ask yourself. And it's, it's really beneficial to do this at the beginning of the year, which is why I'm sharing this with you today. Yo, is that kid cut? Let's go, baby. Glad you're here, my guy. Appreciate you. So when you answer questions like this, you can obviously assess your situation and understand where and how to market your photography business. Point number two, who are you trying to sell to? You have to identify your customer. You have to start with a broad, a broad idea of who you're targeting and what you need to know about them. You've heard me say time and time again, you have to research the people who you're trying to work for. The more we research those people, those companies, the more we understand them, the easier it's going to be for us to work for them. So find out everything you need to know about them. And next, every company has a problem. That's something that we as creatives have to discover. What is that company's problem? Their problem, their website's horrible. Their social media, horrible. Their photography on their website, terrible. Their headshots, their company headshots are horrible. Now, once you identify what that problem is, you can bring them a solution as to how to solve it. It's a genius way to just get customers. You get clients that way because the clients don't even know that they have a problem until you kind of show them and then explain to them how easy it's going to be for you to fix that problem. Once you determine what your target customer is, um, and obviously it's more than just identifying a standard demographic, meaning who's in my area. It's more about age, gender, income. Like, do they spend money on advertising, marketing? Do you think that they have the budget to do that? Also, you've heard me say you got to get to know the people who you're trying to work for. What are their passions? What are their concerns? And what are their challenges? When you delve deep into your customer's when you dive deep into who your customers are, it'll help you understand what their behaviors are and their buying decisions. And you can position yourself at the right time to be the one that they choose when it comes time to hire. So what's your competition doing? You got to learn everything that you can about your competitors. As far as other photographers in your market, if you're a shooter, and you're shooting portraits, you need to know other shooters in the area or in your city that are also doing what you're doing. The purpose of researching your competitors is to help you figure out how you can differentiate yourself from them. And again, this is all from the desk of Ethan Klein. Ethan's a marketing expert and has been super helpful by putting this little presentation together for us. What makes you stand out from the crowd? Again, our uniqueness, our oddities, our creativity, it's 100% us. So the more you lean into your uniqueness, that's how you stand out from the crowd. So define what your product or obviously your photography services are and what makes them unique. Then you can determine how to check yourself or measure yourself against your competition. Again, it's really key to know what other people are doing and what's working for them. Find out what's working for them and think of how you can shift it and make it work for you. You should look for untapped opportunities that your, your competitors haven't tried. This is gold. I hope you guys are finding this helpful. Number four, what are you now, now that you know this information, what are you going to do? You got to set some goals. What do you want to accomplish this year? And this is why it's super beneficial to have this discussion and to have these notes at the beginning of the year, because 
you can ask yourself, what do I want to accomplish this year? It could be something as simple as get more viewers to your website weekly, gain 100 new followers on Insta, maybe expand your business network, learn, meet new people. Maybe you're trying to offer a new service or make something that you offer already better. Your 2023 goals should be ambitious, but not unattainable. But you have to have them. You have to have goals. If you don't have goals, you're just pissing in the wind. It's important to know what you're trying to do this year. And what a better week than now to figure what that out, figure out what that is. So number five, how are you going to get there? Now that you have your goals defined, you can create a map to help you accomplish them. Look at each goal individually and figure out what you need to do to accomplish it. By analyzing the steps you need to take, you're making the goal tangible and providing yourself with a map to keep on track. You know that in January, you should be doing this. So then in February, you can do this. And then in March, you can do this. If you're not creating goals for yourself as a photographer, you're really just moving in a way that's unguided. So this is some notes from Ethan Klein from the desk of a marketing pro. I hope you guys found that helpful. Ethan, wherever you are, thank you. Let's go. Appreciate you. Thank you for sending that and doing that for us. All right. Hope you guys are enjoying my smiling face and this show. You guys know um, the whole point of this program is for you guys to participate, it's for you guys to be asking me questions, it's for you guys to be talking to each other. I have the fastest growing Discord on the interwebs, so if you guys aren't in my Discord, you can look in the description of this video and you'll find the Discord link. And also, one of my people are so quick with it, they're gonna pop the Discord link in chat right there for you so you can see it right away. Also, let's not forget that I have the dopest merch store. If you guys aren't wearing Cardi Crew merch, if you're a creative and you don't look as fly as me when I'm shooting, um, definitely you got to check my merch store. There's two links. I have a secret merch store, which is limited edition drops. That's in the description of this video, as well as my main merch store where you can get everything that I'm wearing. So you can look dope while you're working, which you should takes this stuff seriously. I put this collection together. So you guys look like photographers. So you look like creatives, make sure you check the merch store in the link below. So obviously, because I'm not monetized yet on this show, you guys have no way, real way of doing super chats or um, that kind of stuff, but you can drop a tip, drop a donation if you find any of this information helpful or have the means to do so. Um, if not, all you guys gotta do to support the show, support the content is watch my videos. I make videos every week. I do live streams every week. If you wanna support, subscribe and watch my content. I mean, I hope that it'll be valuable for you. Um, I put out three live streams a week as well as videos and shorts. So we are grinding. If you love photography like I do, definitely hit that sub button. Let's go. All right. So we have some photos, I believe, in the Discord to peek at. I think Brother Les has made some photos. Um, by the way, guys, if you're not in the Discord, make sure you hit the Discord link so you can also submit photography. My brother, Brother Les, has made some photographs. And I'm going to share, let's just see where Les put them. Ah, yes, they are up here. My brother put some photographs together. So I just need to find, ah, uh, here we go, weekly challenges. Now, my brother is a painter. Uh, brother Les, my older brother, he's eight years older than me. He's been my biggest artistic influence since I've been a child. My brother was a child prodigy for art. He's a photorealistic painter. And photographs in order to assist him with his painting as well as to submit for the show he likes to participate so we're going to be looking at some photographs from my brother as well as 
one of his recent paintings. So Les says, I've been shooting all my newer artwork for my website, but with the weekly challenge to be with the weekly challenge shooting self portraits, I decided to use two photos to create a composite of a take of one of my paintings, which is called George, I Can't Breathe. It's coming up to four years since the RCMP um, pulled a gun on my brother when he was in his garage. Imagine my brother, a black man who looks just like me, is in his own garage um, and his key wasn't working. So he's trying to jiggle the key to get in to check on his motorcycle. And he turns around and there's cops with their guns drawn on him and they literally almost shot him. So. My brother has PTSD because of that. He created a painting because um, it was around the same time that George Floyd was killed. So um, he made this picture, this painting, and I'm going to show you this painting right now because it's so absolutely pow powerful. This painting is a painting by my brother Les, and he's made some photography and a double exposure. And I thought today, it would be great to share this work with you. And you can see how he's making the same expression in order to kind of fill in this face. I think I'm gonna do my brother a little solid today. And then this is the double exposure that he put together. Les, this is great. This is great. I know that you don't have a lot of experience with double exposures, but this is really, really, really close man i really like this a lot less this is fantastic for somebody who doesn't make a living at photography let's go this is really great Les. thank you for sharing this is amazing amazing so again it's part of the therapy for him to go through this and then Les shot some more expressive self-portraits which i think are just amazing the exposure on this one, Les, is just a touch dark. And I also think that it would be really strong in black and white. So I'm going to look at that in black and white in a second. This is great. This is you doing that expression almost exactly. And also the framing, um, the non-distracting background, and even like your attempt at getting the light right. Like this is all really great. This one is really great. They're all great, Les. This is really, really great. So what I thought I would do, what I thought I would do is open Photoshop and see if I could take the original painting that you've made and the photograph that you did the double exposure of and see if I can't create a double exposure that looks very much like yours or close to yours. And we're going to use this time also um, for me to ask you guys questions, I'm asking if there are some challenges that you guys would like to see this year. I know that you mentioned some areas that you'd like some help with in 2023. One of those things that you asked for help with was marketing. And you can see what I've done in order to help you with marketing is bring in a marketing expert. So ask me, what do you need? Tell me what you'd like to be challenged with. And I will see if I can't um, make some miracles happen. Okay, so let's open Les's George painting and let's open his. Yeah, okay. And then let's open this photo. And good, you gave me really good resolution too, Les. This is great. Okay, so. And then this photo, there we go. Okay, so what I figured I would do is work this face and then paste it on and see if we can't blend it. The issue is that we're clipping your chin just a bit here, bro. You see how it's like there's so much top, but there's not a lot of mouth, which when we look here, you can see there's a lot more chin. So I'm gonna see what I can do here for you. Cause basically what I'm trying to do is grab, you can see you're even cutting your lip, which makes it a little hard. Let me look at one of your other frames to see if 
there's a better picture. You're not really quite turned enough. Yeah, I got to use that frame. That's the only option. So what I would do first is I need like a selection. So I'm going to do this just uh, very rudimentary. Oops, let's undo that. We're going to go this way. I realize I think I have to use the pen tool because um, I find it much harder to do this with for like freehand. There we go. There we go. So this, this is how I would do this double exposure as I'd grab your face here like this. And then let me actually go to here. And then over here, I click paths. And then you hold command and click there. And then that makes this a selection. So I can now copy it. And now we're going to go over here and I'm going to paste it and layers. So now you can see here, there's two layers. That's the background layer. So I want to just erase this little bit of edges here. And again, I'm trying to do this quick, bro, because I'm we're live. So erase a little bit of edges here where I missed my selection. And then what we're going to do, we're going to show this. Going to transform. Oops, that's the wrong button. Transform this. Bring this right down. See if we can't line. And also, I'm going to take the opacity now down to 50%. So it's going to be easier for me to match up where the eyes are. Now you can see there the eyes are matched. And then I'm just going to transform that. Now, I think the secret is using multiply. No, it's not multiply. I think it might be soft light. We use soft light. Let's bring this opacity. Yeah, it might not be that. It's really, it's really tricky because again, I'm not uh, the one we need to ask to do this for us is Renee. Um, I'm not a fantastic composite artist, but I know that I can make even this with opacity, which is what you were doing. You can see how the mouth doesn't really line up. But I would also do a little erase with the forehead and pull, pull this out. Like this, and then out here, like this. And then the last thing, because your photo's color and he's black and white ish. Yeah, this is starting to look like something. What I would do is change your, I would take the opacity, comp I mean the color. Uh, what am I doing here? I never go up here, hue saturation. I would take your saturation all the way out less. And then that would allow me to pull my, this back up, you see? And to me now that's starting to get a little bit closer. Let me just go full screen so you can see what that looks like. Now that to me is starting to get a little bit closer. There's just a little bit of an edge here that I would take, a, I'd wanna take away. And again, I just have to feather this. Keep feathering it, brother. I just gotta keep, um, I got to make the hardness zero on this brush 
and make this a little bit bigger so I can just really softly pull this down. You see the difference now? And just softly to take this hard line out. And then now, that's now starting to look like something. But the thing is, bro, is that the mouth doesn't match up. Like your eyes match up, but the mouth doesn't. You can see how your mouth is doubled down here. So there's a couple ways, like I could try to, um, I could try to squish it a little bit, um, which doesn't actually look bad, but then it makes it so your nose doesn't line up. So because of that, um, what I would do is, let me just undo that. What I would do is erase your mouth. As you can see here, if I erase your mouth and you just leave your eyes and then I could pull the opacity up of your eyes more. And you can see there, now it looks like you, right? Like um, overlay said, Julia, yeah, overlay didn't work. But see, to me, that now looks more like you. Look at the difference. Do you know what I mean? To me, I don't know. You tell me what you guys think. But that's the original painting. And then this is um, my version. I don't know. I, I like it. It's got something there. But again, if you took the nose out, if you took the nose out a little bit, Wow. Like if you took the nose out a little bit and left it like more like this, where it's just your eyes in there. I know I know very little about composites. I don't even try to. I, I feel like this is starting to feel like something less. You know, to me, that's starting to feel like something. And again, you guys tell me I'm not the... Um, I'm not the composite artist, but there's definitely, definitely a bit of my brother in there. I actually could even turn his face a little bit. Let me just show you. I could actually turn his face a little bit so the eyes match a little bit more. Yeah. Yeah, Les, I think that would, for me, that's it. That's as close as I can get. You see? That's as close as I can get, but I, I'm feeling it. What I'm going to do, my brother, is I'm going to save this, and I'm going to post it to the Discord, and you can look at this versus yours. And if you want to use this one, no problem. If you want to give me higher res versions... Um, I'm also okay with that. Guys, if you have any photographs for me to look at, now would be the time to post them for me. And now I will show you our two photos back to back. And again, brother, you know I'm not trying to show you up. I just know that photography wise, um, and especially composites, like I'm, I'm not great at them at all. But we can just look at them here side by side. Where's OBS? Here we go. I can just look at them like this, side by side. You can see this one here is the one that you did, big bro. Which again, is not, it's not bad at all, my guy. It actually is not bad. And then there's the one that I did, which has way more of your painting. Um, yeah, anyways. Les, thank you for submitting your painting. Thanks for sharing this painting today so I can share with my audience. I do appreciate that. And I hope you guys, I hope you like what I did. Took just a few minutes to do that for you. It just took a minute. All right. And again, as far as these photos, bro, there's just an exposure thing. If you look at this against the white, you can see my skin tone versus your skin tone. And we have the same tone. So it just shows you that this is just a touch 
dark. Um, it's just a touch dark. So again, my skin, your cheek, it, it needs to be up probably plus one stop. Uh, that means if you're in Lightroom, oops, if you're in Lightroom, you have to add plus one in the um, exposure column. And then you might have to add back a little bit of contrast. That's going to give you a little bit of a little bit more detail here and make this up here not feel muddy. Right now it feels a touch muddy. But those expressions in the crop are also really dope. Well played, Brother Les. Thank you for submitting. Let's go. Let's go. All right, guys, if you're watching this on YouTube, thank you. Please drop me likes if you're liking this kind of content. I do a bit of an unconventional vibe here. I live stream, I talk photography, and um, I mentor emerging photographers and help them get to the next level. That's the goal. So guys, do you have questions for me? I'm wondering if you have any questions. Um, Sam McRae, by the way, glad you're here. Les Cardi, I hope that that helped you. Do let me know if you'd like that. Julie Legovska is all the way in the war-torn country of Ukraine right now. So Julie, please stay safe. What else can we talk about? We have one more thing to go over, which is this week's challenge. I want to spend a few minutes on this. You guys might have questions about this week's challenge but I think I'm going to I'm going to help you this is really going to help you and this is setting the tone for your year now I want to show one more piece of video this will explain perfectly what your challenge is the challenge is this it's pretty simple i want you to talk to camera for one minute convey some thoughts convey some ideas see if you can do it without editing and see if you feel good enough to just show us how it is free flow without an edit at all talking to camera again it's something that not everyone's going to want to do not everyone's going to be brave enough to put themselves out there like i'm trying to do right now but i promise you if you do it it's going to make you way way better when you're sitting in a meeting talking to a potential client. I'll see you guys back at my desk. I couldn't make the volume any louder. How do I, how I understand that I, um, I do know the volume was a little bit low, but the reason that I wanted to show you this clip is I wanted to explain to you that I shot that video that I showed you earlier I shot this yesterday. Today we're talking but I about shot getting this, better. I shot this four times. And then um, before that, during the afternoon, the reason I shot that here is because shooting outside, I wanted to change the look. I wanted to just change the background and give you guys something different to look at. That's why I did the pre-roll. That's why... I went to High Park where Matt Howe has shot so many beautiful photographs. I wanted to record um, that tip list for getting being better in front of the camera. I wanted to shoot that in High Park. It was so cold that I have snot in my nose. My hands were unfunctioning. I'm holding my R5 on a pole. I'm trying to like deliver my notes. I can't feel my hands. I can't operate the camera. And also the biggest thing was the where the position of the sun. It was like the last half an hour of sun. The sun was gorgeous, but where I was standing, I was putting the shadow of the camera on my face. Like it's on my face the entire time so this was the clip that I was able to share with you um, also there was wind sound the wind noise was so unbelievable that I had to record the whole thing again I shot a picture 
for Instagram that was showing my hands as I was warming up and I couldn't I couldn't use my hands like I couldn't touch the camera operate the camera it just it was the next stage was frostbite and I'm trying to record a video and use inflection and do all that stuff so I tried to put myself in a very hard scenario and do this to show you that you can do this. That was yesterday, Matt, to show you that you can do this. So to recap what I said in that video, this week's challenge is this. I want you to compose a little story or a little thought and I want you to set up your camera, whether it's your DSLR or your mirrorless camera or an iPhone. And I'd like you to record one to two minutes of what you'd like to accomplish this year or two minutes on where you are with your photography today, where you were last year and where you hope to be at the end of the year. I'm not going to tell you exactly what you should say, but what I want you to do is deliver a one to two minute video. You do have the option to edit. You know I talked about Descript. I talked about ums and ahs. I talked about doing another take. All of that stuff is allowed. There's no rules to whether you edit, whether you shoot it in one take, whether you do a thousand takes or whether you do one. The only thing is that you really should do it. The reason that I created this challenge, as I said in that video, is for you to become more comfortable talking to clients, more comfortable presenting your work, presenting your portfolio, more comfortable on Zoom chats, more comfortable using nonverbal communication, using expression, pausing, making eye contact. All of these things, us creative people, us photographers, we have a hard time with all of these things. Like I have a hard time with eye contact in person with people just because I, I'm just nervous. And also I realize Sometimes when I am making eye contact, when I'm speaking, I lose my train of thought. It's very, and also when I'm listening, sometimes if I make eye contact, I find it um, easier to listen if I don't. I actually then hear words. So these are things that I'm working on. And as I'm working through my isms and schisms. I think that it's a good time for you guys to also be working through them. I've been doing this talking to camera thing for probably 10 years and the last two years live. So I think I have some tips to offer. I hope you guys found them valuable. And I also can tell you after I got good at talking to camera, I signed a two year deal with Canon. After I got good at talking to camera, the amount of $10,000, $20,000, $30,000 jobs that I got, I just, I have a way of conveying ideas now and a way to, about talking that people listen. So you can learn that. It's learned behavior. No one is born with a natural gift for talking to camera. Most people have to go to broadcasting school and learn how to do it. So some of the tips that I delivered to you today, I hope help you. And your assignment, your challenge is speaking to camera. And again, I know not all of you guys are going to do it, but um, all of you should do it because it's to help you. All right. Um, so Matt Howe, welcome, by the way. Um, Matt says reading was a huge help to help him become a better presenter. I I 100% agree Matt, like that's definitely that's definitely something that would help you just reading more and learning how other people use inflection through words and how you can read 
two, three different ways, like the same sentence on that. That's great. That's great. So guys, I hope you appreciate and like today's episode. Um, as I've said earlier in the season, my episodes now are going to be shorter. I feel like it's necessary. The sweet spot for my episodes are under an hour. I feel like that's something that's going to make it so people will watch more of my episodes. When you see an episode is two hours, it becomes daunting. So I thought that I would put together my shows and and leave room for you guys to ask me questions for you guys to ask me um what are you saying julie for you guys to ask me questions to do q a of course and to leave lots of room to look at photos if necessary although you guys know the main looking at photos day um for well julie Again, if I had photos to look at today, we would have a little bit of a bigger episode. Um, I'm also, I also have another big bit of news for you that I've kind of, um, I still have a little bit more for you. Um, Fiona Lark is going to be a guest on our show again, which is amazing. Um, Fiona has replied to my hails and Fiona has said yes she would love to be a guest and yes she'd love to be a guest on this show this month now she's also said that she would prefer to do pre-recorded rather than a live which caused her some anxiety so I have said that that's no problem so what i'm going to ask you guys now is if you have questions for fiona you can leave them in the discord you can dm me if you have anything specific that you want to ask fiona you can message me you can dm me um i want to put together a great interview and us being able to do it offline it makes it more like a video so we're going to shoot it like that i'm going to shoot it like a video I will debut it during behind the picture and then it'll be on YouTube as a standalone video. So that's coming up soon. I also just released my YouTube video on Fiona, um, the short website review that I did recently. So that's out there for you to watch as well. And um, know that the key mindset shift that you have to make as far as being on camera you have to know that your authenticity is valuable. I want you to say that to yourself again. My, my authenticity is valuable. And know that your uniqueness, your expertise in that thing that you know more than anyone else about, and your understanding of communication that's coming from another person, that's coming from a client, you understand all of that and nonverbal communication, getting better at speaking to camera, it's going to help you with all three of these things. Please stop focusing on what you look like or what your voice sounds like. You need to stop focusing on that. Remember, what you look like to you is not what you look like to other people. What you sound like to yourself is not what you sound like to other people. So get that part out of your head. Speaking to camera will make you seem like you're more comfortable with yourself. It's gonna make you better at pitching to clients and it's gonna help you gain confidence in yourself and in front of new people. You have to shift your mind. You have to remember that your authenticity is valuable and remember, there is no camera. You're speaking to the audience that's watching you on the video. There is no camera. The camera is just a means to an end. So knowing all of this information and all of this stuff that I shared with you today, the only thing that you guys have to think of is, what are you going to say? The cooler shot that you set up 
the more into the setup you get, the more into the lighting you get, the more into the idea of you talking to camera you get, when it comes time for you to actually sit down and talk to camera, it's gonna almost be automatic. And again, think that you're speaking to a friend, look down the barrel of the lens, but you're looking through the lens, not at the camera physically itself, but you're looking at the person who's looking at the video. Think only about your viewer, even if it's no one. Still, um, talk like you're talking to an audience of people. Guys, if you made it this far today in my podcast, I thank you. If you like my smiling face, please consider hitting the like button on this video. Likes make this video go out to more people. If you want to get notified when I upload new content to this channel, you have to subscribe. I do podcasts Tuesday, Thursday, and Sunday. Always interactive, always giving you direct access to me. And um, if you made it to the absolute end of today's video, drop what makes you the most nervous about talking to camera I want you to drop that in the comments because you made it to the end of this video and to prove to me that you made it to the end of this video, I want to know what makes you the most nervous about talking to camera. Leave that in the comments of this video. I'm going to read all of them. I'm going to respond to every one of them and I'm going to start looking at your talking to camera clips this week and for the rest of the month during Ask a Photo Pro. So the end of the month, we're going to be having your self-portraits, your talking to camera clips, and our two other challenges, which I'll reveal um, during the next two episodes. It's gonna be, you guys have lots of challenges to do. No, let's go freak, I'm glad you're here. M.M. M. Reed, glad you're here. Um, we haven't seen Emma in a while. I'm so glad you're here, Emma. And I hope you've watched the Viewer Photo of the Year Awards because you were in it lots. Glad you were here. Glad you're here. Make sure you watch that episode. I tried to honor all of my viewers. So please leave what makes you the most nervous in the comments of the video below. Please save your non-challenge images for... BTP photo drop and AAPP photo bomb in the Discord for viewing during this show when time permits or during unscheduled live streams, which is another thing I'm going to be doing from time to time is unscheduled live streams. If I have an idea or a thought that I'm trying to get out, I'm going to just live stream. So if you see my Discord, Julie's been amazing about putting all the weekly mini challenges as well as the monthly overall challenges in the Discord. So make sure you go there. Also, you'll see I have announcements channels for these mini challenges. So if you're lost, they're always in the announcement challenges. And also I have all my past assignments are in that there's an archive in the challenge tab of all the past assignments that we've done for the past two years. So there should never be an excuse for I don't have anything to shoot. Um, many challenges get dropped weekly at the end of every behind a picture episode. And I'm also going to be choosing viewer images to review off stream and make videos specifically on your images that I choose. One day I'll make a video on Sam. One day I'll make a video on Julie. I'm going to start doing that for YouTube as well. And I would like to be processing your RAWs on stream and making videos of processing your RAW files. So if you guys have RAW files, you're kind of lost on how to bring the best out of that file. It would help me um, and I can help you if you guys drop those RAW files in the RAW file directory in the Discord. You'll find directions or instructions for how to do that in the Discord. So guys... I hope you found this helpful. I apologize for the mute. 
at the beginning of today's episode. And again, if you like this content, there is so much for you to watch. You guys should go watch that right now. Thank you guys so very much for watching and we'll see you guys on Tuesday. I'll be playing Warzone tonight on Twitch. If you guys are into that kind of thing, come visit me. One love. 